What's up, Moto Buddies? Mike here from Taco Moto Co. and Baja Taco Tours. I've got a 19 Plus. This is a 19 through 23 generation Honda CRF 450 RL. We're going to do a TPS calibration procedure on the AIM ECU. This procedure, now this bike is stripped apart way more than yours probably is going to be. What you will need to do is gain access to the ECU. And the easiest thing to do is to take off the side panel here, the, the body cover panel, and then you'll gain access to the ECU. And you can do this job with the ECU still in its mount. There is a plug that you're gonna remove, which is right here. I'm gonna pull mine out and show you this way, just so it's easier for you to visualize what we're doing. But like I said, you can do this with it still mounted. You don't have to disassemble your bike or take off the tank uh, unless you'd like to. So first thing you're gonna do is remove this little pin plug right here. So this is, Notice the orientation, the bottom of your ECU. This is the top row of the wires. There is a plug on the right, and the one on the left comes out. Be careful with this thing and save it. It needs to go back in later. Now you're gonna take a, I've got a two foot piece of 18 gauge wire right here, and it's stranded. And so I've stripped off about eight millimeters on each side and twist that. You're gonna insert that into the cavity that you just opened up and it's gonna go in until it stops. As soon as it stops, it's in contact with the pins of the ECU. The other side is gonna be grounded out on the battery from time to time as the, as the instructions will let you know about that. I like to put a towel here on top of this and uh, you don't want this to ground out onto the chassis unless you're at that step to do it. Next steps are going to be on the sheet, which we'll put a link to. This is uh, just uh, instruction steps to do this procedure. So I'm going to go through that right now. We want to make sure the key is in the off position. Make sure that the master run switch is in the engine off position. From there, you can start uh, or turn on the key rather. Note that the check engine light is off. And at this point now, we're going to come back down to this trigger wire. This is basically our TPS programming trigger wire. At various times, we're going to touch that to the battery negative, and that will put our ECU into uh, capture mode. So that's like program mode for the TPS. So at this point, I am going to ground out or touch my wire. I now have it touched to the negative battery. And at this point, we'll turn the master switch here to the run position. Note when I do, the ECU starts flashing the check engine light in a medium speed pulse. And so that tells me that we are in program mode. The next step is to do the zero throttle. So that would be the fully closed throttle position. Uh, so I want to make sure that I'm completely closed, throttle all the way in the closed position, which it is. While you're watching the light, I'm going to touch the trigger lead a second time to the negative battery and that put it into program mode for zero percent throttle the light when it was in the steady mode for about two or three seconds that's when it was learning and so it's flashing again and so it's telling us it's ready for the next function that next function is 100 percent throttle wide open so i've got this held in the full open position watch the light again i'm going to be touching the lead, the programming lead to the battery now. And you see that the light goes steady for a second and um, then it flashes fast. And that concludes the procedure. So at this point I can release. I'm gonna kill the key because we're done with the procedure. That blinking flash, fast light told us that we're done. And when I touch, when the instructions told me that it was time to touch, Basically, uh, there's only three times where you touch the battery. The first time is when you touch it and you hold it while you, while you toggle that switch to the run position. The other two times, when you do the 0% and 100%, all you're doing there is you're just momentarily touching it. And the instructions are very clear about whether it's held or momentarily touched. So now that we're done, we're gonna pull the wire out. One note, if you're check engine light does not respond to the trigger wire being touched to the negative battery, it's very likely that this has not been pressed in far enough and is not touching the pin in the ECU. So we can remove that. We can plug back in the little connector, the dummy plug, and that goes 
right back into its little cavity. Make sure that it's pressed in all the way, and then you can just reinstall whatever you've taken apart, put, put side panels on, and you're done. If you have any questions about that procedure, let us know in the comments or send us an email. If for whatever reason it makes you nervous having that, that bare wire uh, laying around and touching it and grounding it and out of sequence, then we offer this little programming button right here, and this is basically like um, a momentary button on a flying lead, and you can connect this in the exact same way that you did uh, if you're just okay with using a bare wire. So we provide this with one end already stripped and just make sure that that is twisted together. You're gonna insert that exactly the same like the other procedure with the other wire. Just make sure it goes in until, all the way until it stops. And then the other end is gonna come over here and connect to the negative post on the battery. Now, Procedure is exactly the same. I'll just run through that again really quick. We're gonna make sure that the run switch here is in the off position, key on. And I'm gonna hold the button as I toggle the switch to the run position. The light flashes, flashes in a medium pulse rate. I can release. The next time I press it is gonna be the trigger, the, the learn trigger and that's for the 0% throttle, so I just want to make sure that that is in fact closed all the way, and it is. I'll press the button now, and notice that the light held steady for a couple of seconds. That's the moment of learning, and then that's done. So that, that memorized the 0% position, zero percent position. Now I'm going to hold this at wide open. I'm going to depress the button again, watch the light. And that learned the wide open throttle position. Now I can release, we're done. The flash, the fast flash pulse means that we're complete. And so I can turn off the key now because we're complete. Everything is the same again here. Take out the wire, disconnect. And you can pop this little plug right back in, put everything back together and you're done. Uh, the final part of this video is just a quick overview of the idea behind the TPS calibration and then these two ways to do it. So you've just got a piece of wire. You probably have these laying around. This is 18 gauge stranded. You can do it with that or you can you can buy our little kit to do it and we'll have a link to that down below and then the procedure. So who needs to do this? Uh, some of the symptoms that you may have, drivability problems with uh, TPS that's out of calibration would be difficult starting or no starting, rough idle, hunting idle, high idle, hesitation, misfires, feels like a misfire, um, and then erratic sort of pulsing power delivery at low throttle angles. When you get into the mid to upper throttle range, the bike is probably gonna operate normally. It will be down, a little bit down on, on power, but the feel is typically not something that anybody knows as they feel it down in the lower throttle ranges is where that shows up. And why would you need to calibrate a TPS? It's because uh, any of the any ECU is going to be pre-programmed internally to be looking for and have an expectation for a certain voltage amount for the TPS value. And uh, for the AIM ECU, it's five point or 0 .510 volts stock value book value for the TPS in this bike. I think is four eight to five one, and. The reason that some aftermarket ECUs have a problem with stock TPS settings that are out of range is because they are high performance race ECUs and so they have very minimal tolerance for sensor data that's out of specification. They're, they're very uh, picky with sensor drift and so any data that comes in that's out of its expected range can just cause drivability issues like I described. Why is it then that a bike, a stock bike, would run okay and then you plug in an aftermarket ECU and then the problem shows up? And that's just the nature of how the stock ECU is set up. It is designed in such a way by the OEMs to allow for sensor drift and to accommodate that as the bike ages and sensor data drops off or just uh, vagaries in the manufacturing process. So for example, it's rare and not super common, but it has happened, does happen, and we've seen it many times, where a factory fresh off the showroom floor bike will have incorrect sensor data. 
and uh, TPS is probably one of the most common ones. And so the stock ECU is designed again to be, I'll use the word sloppy, but that's not entirely accurate, but let's just say sloppy in its allowance, allowing some of that out of, out of range sensor data to pass through and then to continue to operate. And then you plug in an aftermarket ECU, a race ECU, and then there is a problem. The problem shows up. The problem's not the ECU. The problem is that bike data. And by correcting the bike data, then the then Shazam, the race ECU, performs as expected. And the, the, the most common piece of data that causes those problems is, is the TPS sensor. And, other, and so do all aftermarket ECUs suffer this problem? Yes and no. So um, by degrees, the Vortex ECU is the most sloppy of the race ECUs. That is to say, it allows and tolerates sensor data uh, that's out of range. And then increasingly less tolerant would be the AIM and the GET. And the reason those are less tolerant is uh, a couple of reasons. First of all and foremost, their processor speed is so much more significant than uh, the Vortex ECU. They just are faster. It's a faster computer. It's doing better math, more math, processing more data and it has a tighter tolerance range of data that's out of spec. And so those two particular ECUs may not work, uh, function as well and perform as well on a bike that's got bad TPS data where the stock will be just fine. Uh, the Vortex may also be fine. It may be a little difficult starting. Performance will be down. So there are tons of instances where a guy will have um, and I've seen this with, with people running stock ECUs, is they will check their, and, and look down here. So I've got a TPS tool, calibration tool set up on this bike, and I've just been doing a lot of testing and experimenting with TPS calibrations and what this particular bike will allow uh, on the stock ECU and aftermarket ECUs. And so we're, we're, there's ongoing tests that we're doing regarding that exact topic. So this bike happened to have the TPS within range. It was, I think it was 4, uh, 0.48, which is within the allowed range, 0.485 if I remember. So this bike was in spec and um, it was fine. It's very difficult on this bike to, you have to drill out or chisel out the screws that hold the TPS sensor on the side of the throttle body on this machine. Super difficult. Honda does not want you messing around with that, so they make it very hard. So where you have a bike that is out of range, it's very difficult. Like if you plugged in this, this calibration tool and noticed that your TPS was out of range, really trying to correct it on the bike is super difficult. It can be done, very difficult. Um, I do know, I, I've talked to a customer who bought a bike and believed that his performance was off and was familiar with TPS calibrations. So he had a tool, checked his TPS, and it was low. I think I remember him saying it was like 3.3 three or something, and too low. The bike started and ran okay, not great. He thought it should be better for a new bike, and lo and behold, his TPS was out of range. And so once he corrected it, and he had to do the work that I described. He had to pull off his throttle body and drill those screws out, and he he readjusted, recalibrated his stock ECU. And as soon as he did that, he said it was a night and day difference. The bike performed better, it idled better, everything about it improved. And uh, so that would have been a bike where, uh, like I described a minute ago, the stock ECU, okay, it tolerated it. Plug in a Vortex, it'd probably be okay, it'd probably tolerate it. Plug in a name or a get, and it's a no-go those ECUs will reject that data and the performance will be flawed. And so this procedure is how we do it with the AIM ECU. There is a very similar procedure to the Vortex ECU. We have a video, we'll cross link that also in the notes. And then with the GET ECU, that procedure is done in the app to zero cal out the TPS sensor and to confirm that data. So, um, that's it. That's, that's this video. If you have any questions, again, you can leave them below. Also, you can email us or text us, and we're happy to help you. Whether you got your parts from us or anybody else, we want to see you enjoy your bikes and have a good time on it. And uh, go out, get some adventure.